you wish things were different. I wish things were different. Ellie! But they ain't. Please stop! I'm leaving tomorrow. To do this smart, we'd be leaving Jackson vulnerable. So they just get to get away with this? How'd you find us? You can't stop this. We could have killed you. Maybe you should have. I'm Neil Druckmann, Vice President of Naughty Dog and the Director of The Last of Us Part Two. We're just a few weeks away from launch on June 19th, when the game will finally be in your hands. The wait has been long, and we're extremely grateful for your patience, especially now in the midst of these unprecedented and challenging times. We hope you're all taking care of yourselves and that you, your friends, and your loved ones are doing well. Because of these extraordinary circumstances, we can't be together in this final stretch and share the experience like we usually would. So today we're trying something different, something we've never done before. Over the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to give you an in-depth look into what awaits you in The Last of Us Part Two including new details about the gameplay experience and story. And to cap it all off, we'll be showing a never-before-seen, lengthy gameplay sequence. You'll definitely want to stick around for that. I don't know what happened. I was supposed to take her to the Fireflies and walk away. They were actually going to make a cure. The only catch. It would kill her. The Last of Us Part 2 picks up Ellie and Joel's story several years after the events of the first game. Ellie and Joel have settled in Jackson, Wyoming, amongst a thriving community of survivors. With the threats of the world kept outside the town's walls, Jackson has been able to find relative peace and even stability. Ellie is now 19, lives on her own, and has been able to forge lasting relationships within the community. Scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate our kiss from last night? However, this peace is short-lived. Jackson and Ellie suffer a violent and traumatizing event. Ellie sets off back into the treacherous outside world in search of retribution and justice. Her journey will take her to new parts of the country previously unexplored in The Last of Us. The story spans multiple seasons and climates, from the snow-capped mountains of Jackson to the lush Pacific Northwest. 
Each introduces a wide range of exterior and interior environments for you to navigate and explore, rendered in meticulous detail and unprecedented scale with the latest iteration of the Naughty Dog engine. Our goal was to make these environments not only beautiful, but feel as grounded and authentic to the cities they're based on as possible. Much of the story unfolds in what remains of Seattle, a massive former quarantine zone. Its locales are incredibly diverse, spanning a dense city center with a skyline of towering high-rises to the beautiful suburbs and stormy waterfronts that surround it. The city exhibits drastic shifts in architecture, elevation, and weather. And with part two, we've introduced new traversal mechanics that afford greater exploration and ways to navigate threats. Ellie is not only able to climb and jump over gaps, but she can use ropes to scale vertical terrain or swing over obstacles, allowing you to discover new areas, resources, and side narratives. These more open environments also create new strategic considerations in combat, whether it's to get the jump on enemies or bypass them entirely. The Last of Us Part Two features some of the largest environments we've ever created. Horseback riding will allow Ellie to quickly cover some of these expansive terrains. Some streets are so flooded that a boat is required to navigate them. However, the world of The Last of Us is as lush and inviting as it is deadly. As Ellie uncovers the path to finding those who have wronged her, she must face the many threats of this unknown city. <laughs> In the wake of the pandemic and the fall of the quarantine zone, Seattle has become a war zone, where two warring factions find themselves in an ongoing conflict for territory and resources. One of these groups is the Washington Liberation Front, otherwise known as the WLF. The WLF are a militia group that began as resistance to the military occupation of Seattle and eventually wrestled control of the city from them. They are highly trained, organized, and well-equipped with weapons they stole from the army. They occupy much of the city, imprisoning or killing trespassers on site. Hey, we got another trespasser, a girl. Did you see her? <laughs> on the other side of this bloody conflict is a group of religious zealots called the Seraphites, or Scars, defined by the self-inflicted deep cuts that they bear across their faces. Like the WLF, they're deeply tribalistic and territorial. They're known for being stealthy, using overgrowth as cover, and they use more silent weapons like bows and arrows. Clipper wings. <laughs> but beyond this conflict among survivors, the threat that originally brought the world to its knees is very much present. Every human is in danger of falling victim to the infected. There are the recently infected runners who are more numerous and aggressive in this game. The blind but extremely deadly clickers and the stalkers who sneak and hide until they're ready to attack, surprising their victims with extreme agility and brutal violence. The Last of Us Part Two introduces new stages of infected, such as the Shamblers. Large, heavily armored enemies that are covered in pustules. Upon getting close to you, they expel a corrosive spore cloud that burns its victims. But our most terrifying and lethal new forms of infected will have to wait until you play the game for yourselves. Overcoming these threats will require careful consideration of how you approach every combat encounter and how you leverage Ellie's unique skills, equipment, and the environment to your advantage. The WLF patrol the streets of Seattle with guard dogs, which are capable of detecting and following you even while in cover. They can pick up your scent and alert their handlers to your presence. Listen mode will reveal your scent trail, so keep moving and cause distractions to avoid detection. 25 years after the pandemic began, the world is completely overgrown. Use tall grass to hide from enemies and go prone to stay out of sight. However, this form of analog stealth means you're never fully hidden. If enemies get close enough, they can discover you, even in grass. When Ellie is overwhelmed, running away is a viable option. 
And you can also break glass or crawl through tight spaces to find new paths or areas to evade or take on your enemies. In any given combat situation, you can flee an encounter and re-establish stealth to regain the advantage. If you absolutely have to fight your way out, there are a variety of tools at your disposal. Ellie's more agile than most of her enemies. She can sprint and quickly dodge incoming attacks. Learning how opponents attack with different weapons and mastering the timing of your dodges will prevent you from taking damage and create opportunities to counterattack. You can use throwable items or well-placed shots to stun enemies before dealing a killing blow. Or using them as a shield to protect yourself or buy some time to figure out your next move. Ellie isn't always alone on her journey. Allies will take part in helping you navigate the environments, spot enemies, and meaningfully help you in combat encounters. Between the human survivors and the roaming infected, there will be times where multiple threats are present, creating new strategic considerations and opportunities. You can choose whether to attack these opponents separately and directly, or find ways to pit them against each other. Flee as they fight, or wait until their numbers have thinned out and engage with whomever's left. Our goal is to create unparalleled attention, coupled with deep systems that give you greater control and influence over your journey. As you play, you'll be able to invest in a broad collection of crafting items, weapon, and player upgrades through training manuals scattered throughout the environment and scavenging for ingredients. These skills and upgrade manuals cater to a variety of playstyles, and the choices you make will create your own distinct experience. We also wanted to extend that agency and personalization to your weapons through our new workbench system. Scavenge for parts to modify and improve your weapon's performance and attributes, all of which are visualized and become part of your character. Survival will also require using the parts and ingredients that you'll find in the environment, which can be crafted into a wide range of defensive and offensive items, like proximity mines, explosive arrows, pistol suppressors, and more. these gameplay systems are meant to immerse you in the world and make you feel in lockstep with Ellie's emotional journey. As we've said before, this is Naughty Dog's largest, most ambitious game. It may seem like we covered a lot, but we've only scratched the surface of what it's like to play The Last of Us Part 2. We can't wait for you to experience it all for yourself on June 19th. Until then, here's an extended sequence of never-before-seen gameplay. Enjoy.
a fucking sound. Hands up. Do you know a girl named Nora? Sure, I do. Where is she? In the hospital. Where in the hospital? Yeah, they're, they're clearing out the upper floors. She's somewhere in there. soldier. It makes these shifts so much easier. Sure. I'll keep that in mind. Fuck. Sounds like scars are getting closer. But that's our guys executing those freaks. Hey, did you hear about we're all getting called up to the pub? I heard that Isaac wants us to retake all of downtown. I heard we might take the fight to them. Oh, no way. Not after what went down last time. Even Isaac isn't that crazy. That's what I heard. All right, calm down. Check it out.
that you, Nora? Tell us where she went. When Isaac talks to us about this, I'm getting tired of this. Nora. Nora! I'm not going down for her, man. Don't scream. Put that shit down. You remember me? Yeah. You remember me. Thank you.